filter working right now. Uh, Jake, do you want to explain to you? It won't So what, this is our uh, river table. Um, what we normally do is we go around to schools and we show kids how a river is formed, how a river changes, and mainly how the Connecticut River watershed was originally formed. Um, and normally, normally we have a couple different uh, experiments that we put on for kids and stuff like that. Um, I'm not really sure what we're doing here. I don't know. Um, so we're with the Silvio County National Fish and Wildlife Refuge, which is um, actually the, which is really unique because it's the entire Connecticut River watershed, which is something that doesn't really happen. So it's a partnership between private lands, public lands. So even like right now here at this library, we're technically on the refuge right now. So even at your home, like if you live within the Connecticut River watershed, you gotta live right over in Chicopee, like my house is in the refuge too. So it's really unique because there's not a lot of places throughout the country that are like, are like that. So it's really unique and it's really important because like Jake was saying with this water table, we take it to schools and stuff like that, and we explain the we explain the watershed and how it works, and we talk about how what you do like up in Vermont or something like that is going to affect everyone down here, and that whole cycle of how like it moves through, like how water moves through the environment, and how it can it picks up things and brings it with you, and it brings it with it, and it, like transports it from place to place. So. And so below here, this this filtering system, <clears throat> how does that equate to the natural world? Oh, this. Um, well, the, this this it's it's actually a pump that brings the water from. So it's almost like the um, like the water cycle, in a way, I guess, um, bringing like with you know like condensation and um, rain and stuff like that because we obviously can't really create that as much in this kind of environment, but um, it's basically yeah, to mimic the, the movement of water from like, because we bring it up to the headwater, which would be up there, and then, um, so it'll flow back all, like, throw, flow down through the, the system, because like down here, the, like up here, would hypothetically be the ocean, and that would be whatever headwater um, in a river. So I guess, yeah, like the water cycle, the water. I've never been asked that question before. So. <laughs> So, um, so what, um, what, so here it filters, make sure that the sand doesn't get inside the water? Yeah, it's just, it just, um, yeah, this, yeah, this, this part of it, um, it filters out a lot of the sand and then this, um, mostly so this filter doesn't get clogged, so it's able to transport the water throughout the water table. Mm -hmm. Cool. And um, and then, is you, you, are you a, a Silvio Conti youth educator, or what um, is your role at the? I I work. I have a contract with the Fish and Wildlife Service, so I've been doing a lot this this summer. Um, and I also work for a place during the summer called the Northwood Stewardship Center. I'm um, doing a youth conservation corps, which is a partnership with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service around here. So two years ago, I was in Hadley, Mass, working on a trail, uh, universal access accessible trail so it's like wheelchair accessible um, for the visually impaired and things like that there it's, it's like all gravel and stuff like that so it's very accessible to any person and then this summer um, the Fish and Wildlife is in the process of acquiring some land down in Long Meadow Mass called Fanny Stebbins so I did some trail work with um, was the first urban youth conservation corps that the Silvio County National Fish and Wildlife Refuge has done so um, I headed up that and it was actually a great success um, we did a lot of we did work with the Re Green Springfield planting trees in the tornado zone like where the tornado went through um, with Forest Park we, in like the city nursery we did some work with them and um, at the Science Museum. We did. Um, we worked in their pollinator garden, and we also got to do, um, some environmental ed with them inside the museum. But mainly, we worked on Fanny Stebbins um, clearing trails and stuff like that. So, yeah. well, thank you very Thanks. much. Your, your artwork for me? Um, um, it was originally supposed to be like a turtle like standing up on it. Mm -hmm. But I like how they made it like all realistic and 3D. And um, I like, I, I really like how I did this because um, I really like nature.
So let's go over to the to the to the to the drain, and you can show me how it how it's like. Don't like so you don't want people to put. Can you explain how this um, works? They see this. Cause you know how um like turtles sometimes mistake like trash bags and old things for like food. And they swallow and get sick. That's what it's kind of like. Somebody sees that and they won't throw trash in that drain. So what's your name? Jacob. That's me? Uh goes to John. Here, here we have, uh, this is a street in Holyoke, okay, and we have a, we're showing a combined sewer system here, so the, uh, the kids get to, uh, they mix their, uh, they mix wastewater, they use, uh, we use chocolate syrup, uh, coffee grounds and crushed cereal, so we make a wastewater. We pour it down a sewer line from the building here, and they get to watch it come down the sewer, and we connect the tubing to the primary clarifier at the plant here, so they get to see the, they get to see the, uh, the water, the wastewater, set, uh, flow into the tank, settle out, it's a clear tank, they get down on the side here and they can look at that. Then, because this project was about storm drains and the impact on, on the uh, water quality of the Connecticut River, we have a storm drain here in the street, okay? And this is a combined system. In other words, the wastewater from the, from the building and the rainfall on the street come into a common pipe. So they, they pour, simulate a rain event, they pour water down the pipe, and this is a combined sewer overflow. When, when the water is, uh, yeah, yeah, the rains too, too heavily, the sewer system can't take it because it's a combined system and it overflows through certain overflows in the city. And, and, uh, in order to, and that means raw wastewater is going through the river. So in Holyoke, a, uh, the largest out CSO, CSO number nine was, was built to capture that water and treat it. So we can simulate a CSO rain outfall, and then by opening the valve to the CSO facility, we divert the water that would be going to the river, the polluted water, we divert it to the CSO facility on the far end of the model. And it captures the water there, just like we do at the plant down the hill here, and we screen out the coarse material, we chlorinate it, and then we dechlorinate it really quick before it goes to the river. So we then we test for E. coli. So we want to we have a permit. We want to make sure our E. coli is below a certain certain number, and uh, so that water, which would raw wastewater, which would go to the river prior, is no longer raw wastewater. It's treated water. So they get to actually do that here on the model. Then we can we can show them other things. We can show them uh, secondary treatment, the bacteria and the and the microorganisms. We we look at them under the microscopes and they learn they act out what uh, secondary treatment, they act out what role bacteria play. They act out what role the higher life forms play and uh, they learn about secondary wastewater treatment. And they get to to do things on the model. So, combined sewer overflow. Right. And then what's over here? This is the plant. And we, what happens at the wastewater treatment plant is we have primary treatment. We have four, we have screening, coarse screening in, in this building where we screen out any large material. Then it flows to four primary tanks, and these tanks over here. And all primary treatment is, it's just going to let it settle. It's just going to let the solids settle. Okay? This happens to be our secondary sludge, but what will happen is anything heavy will settle out. And that will produce what we call our primary sludge. Sludge. Then that water, that primary effluent water, goes to our aeration tank. That's where we grow the bugs. So that we actually have real mixed liquor in that tank. We are aerating it, and then from that tank, this is what we call our mixed liquor activated sludge flows to four secondary clarifiers. And if you look over here, down below, we can see that 
The key to secondary treatment is to have the bugs settle at the bottom. And the clear supernane is our effluent. This gets recycled and a part of it, the majority of it gets recycled back to the tank for treatment and then a portion of it gets wasted every day. About 80,000 gallons a day of, of sludge gets wasted, which we process and, and uh, dry. Uh, then it goes to a chlorine contact chamber and we chlorinate it and then from there to the river. And we will remove like 98 to 99 percent of our uh, of our s suspended solids that come in and our our organics, which we call biochemical oxygen demand (BOD). So we have a permit on our effluent where we have to meet meet those requirements. We have to meet a requirement for bacteria. Seasonally, we have to uh, we run tests twice a week to make sure that we're, we're chlorinating properly and keeping the E. coli count down. Because once again, the uh, uh, that's uh, very important for river quality. E. coli is uh, bacteria from the lower intestine that we don't want to get into our upper intestine. That makes us sick. <laughs> So that's that's what we do with with this interactive model. We bring it into schools. We can bring it to events like this. We just did with this program. We were in seven whole Oak schools, fifth grade science classes. So the kids get to learn all about wastewater treatment without ever having to go to the treatment plant. Walk around. It's not safe to walk around these tanks. You know, the railings aren't set up for for young people. So. The whole idea was to bring this to them and teach them. I'm sorry. So I got here this morning, and some of the colors were a little bit off, so I went over it, being like, oh man, I gotta make sure this looks good. Um, <laughs> so that worked out really well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have some cool paint cleaner stuff that'll come right off. You're gonna have nightmares today. I know, well, this it's honestly probably the worst thing that could possibly happen, so like, whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah, that's, like the, that's like the only bad thing that could happen, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's all a pill. Or yeah, right. Something. <laughs> Uh, but it's been awesome, and it's really fun to work in these kind of like really primary, like bright, like younger kid colors. And I don't know, it feels like playing with giant Legos or something. You're just taking all these different blocks and figuring out how they're gonna work, and then like moving things around and stuff. And so yeah. I'll be able to point out and be like, hey, will be a, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be yeah, here forever. The funny thing is, like, that's the sewer. Like, the sewer is right there. Okay, now. It's just lucky. <laughs>